In this video, I'm gonna talk about the study methods and techniques I used in medical school so I could pass medical school. Hi, I'm Dr. Legrand, and as you assumed, yes, I was able to get through medical school, but having ADHD and dyslexia is a big challenge going through medical school. So I had to really find different ways of studying methods and techniques that would work for me going through medical school. I spent a lot of time in the library trying to figure out the best methods and found out ones that didn't work, found out ones that did. And I wanna share with you pretty much a not too exhaustive list of different study methods and techniques that I use that simply worked for me, for my, especially my ADHD, ADHD brain and hope that it can help you. One of the most difficult things when you're in medical school is the amount of classes and lectures that you have to go to. And then you're like, how do you study? When do you study? How do you have the energy to study? And this makes it really difficult. And one of the tips that I found for the first thing that I think that was really beneficial that helped me be really more proficient and productive and be able to have the energy to study in between classes is when I would have my first set of morning classes. Okay. I would have, you know, three or four different classes back to back. By that time, you kind of feel a little burnt out. So instead of having, you know, when I have that, you know, like two or three hour study break before I would have to go to my next set of classes, I would go to the gym first. I would go work out. I would go running. And why I would do this is because I found that it would help me have more energy and it also helped me revitalize myself. And then when I would then go study, I was more alert and I felt like I could focus more because I had that more energy. And it's definitely shown in and science that yeah, what it does when you're doing exercise is increasing blood and oxygen and nutrients to the brain so that way it can work at its most optimal way so your brain can be able to be more efficient when it's when you are studying. Along with studying, one thing that is difficult with people who have ADHD and my ADHD brain, I would get distracted so easily. It didn't matter if someone sneezed across the room or if someone was playing a game outside, I would be watching through my window. Oh, what's going on? <laughs> I kid you not, an hour could go by and I got nothing done. And so the way that I had to do this is I to distract any kind of distractions is I would have to use my headphones to listen to music, to really eliminate any kind of sounds. In fact, throughout college, any medical school, any of my classmates knew or any of my friends, when I was going in between classes, I had those headphones in and I was reading my notes and studying. All because when you're in medical school, you gotta take every kind of amount you can do, especially with ADHD. You gotta take every amount of studying that you possibly can. And so people would be like, oh, hey, what's up, Legrand? I wouldn't totally be focused on what I was studying because I had my headphones in, could not hear them, and they knew this. And I would have to tell them, it's like, hey, I tried to say hi to you. I'm like, yeah, man, if you try to say hi to me when I'm in between classes, most likely I am zoned in and I am not gonna be able to hear you. So I do apologize. But when I'm in my social aspect, when it's after studying, then yeah, I can we can socialize, but that's just what I had to do. And because I would do that, I was more efficient when it came to studying and being more productive because of doing that. Now, when it came to studying, I had, I used a lot of different study tactics, but one that I did find very helpful, and this is true across the board for everybody, is using active recall. You've probably heard of it, and there's different ways you can do that. You can do it through flashcards, you can do it by really rewriting down your notes that you actually created. It's essentially is challenging to see if you actually know the information. And flashcards, so what I would do is as I was going through my flashcards, I would not just like, okay, here I'm going through my flashcards, but I would take two different piles or I create two different piles over time is I would look at the information and say, okay, I know this information. So I put that in this pile. Then the cards that I didn't know, then I had in a separate pile. And then I would be focusing on those cards. But I found this really beneficial because instead of just reading a textbook or reading my notes, over and over and over again, when I would do that, I would not be prepared for the exam. But when I would take the time to make in the flashcards and really challenging myself, I would perform better in the exams. It made me more confident when I would go into the exam versus just trying to cram or just try to think by just over reading notes over and over again would somehow I would magically have this photographic memory. But along with active recall, you have to use something that I was helpful for me was space repetition. So as 
as I would study these flashcards, like I mentioned, I would separate them into two different groups. So the group of the cards that I did not know, I would study it the next day. The group that I did know, I would review it in three days. And then if I still knew the information, then I would review it again in a week and then so on and so on. And the reason this is important in spacing it out is to make sure that you really do know it. You might know it for a day, but do you know it in three days? Do you know it in a week? Do you know it in a month? So it's really important to do this, but more importantly, it was important for me to know this information, not just because to pass my exams, pass my medical boards, but so that I knew this information when I was in practice. So I do this information when I'm helping my patients out. Now, one of the things I had to really adjust in my studying, even though it was a challenge for me and I had to study more than most of my classmates because I had ADHD and dyslexia, I had to realize I had to take breaks. And the reason I had to do that is because if I studied for too long a period of time, things wouldn't retain. I, my brain would go to mush, I would be exhausted, I would hate studying, it wouldn't be enjoyable anymore, so I would take study breaks. And how I would do those study breaks is I would take the time is I'd go out in nature and be able to really kind of just de-stress and try to process the information that I was just learning. And by doing this, it helped me relax and then I was ready to go for the next, you know, three to four hours studying again, but I had to take breaks. Along with taking breaks, what I found is when I would study in my same spot every time, it would got too repetitious, it got too boring for me. And so I started to study in different places and different areas where I would look at specifically, okay, maybe I shouldn't be always studying in my room. So I would go study in the library. But then one of the most effective places that I would study is actually outside and different sceneries. And what this did is what I would find when I was going to the exam and take the exam, I would think about those places and that material that I studied in that particular place. Because it, what the brain's doing, it's making those connections. It's connecting to be able to realize, aha, I remember this. I was studying this when I was in this place in this type of scenery. The more connections you can make because of that emotional connection, the better. And that's what I found for myself. Another great thing that I would do is before exam day or even at any other day, I would study right before I would go to bed. Now, not necessarily go in a deep study session, but I would review notes. And the reason I would do this is because I knew by doing this and going right to sleep is the science tells you, you know, you're able to retain the information more because your brain is able to process and download all the information that you just freshly just studied. So I would do this right before an exam. And then right in the morning, I would, you know, just review my notes really briefly. And when I would start doing this, I perform better in my exam. And I started doing this every single time I had exams, but a lot of times even studying during the week, I would study right before I go to bed just to review my notes and then go to sleep. And then I dream about it and I would just be processing it more. One of the other things that helped me be confident going into an exam is I would do practice tests. I think practice tests made a huge difference because I could ask my teacher, what kind of practice tests are you going to ask? Do you have any examples I can use? Or they had books in the library that I could test out of all the different types of subjects because there's so many different subjects in medical school that you have to study that when I would study those actual test exams, practice test exams, and I did well, I was more confident. I'm like, okay, I got this. I think I'm going to do really well. So I go in the exam confidence. And that's important when you're going into an exam is feeling confident. But more importantly is you might see those same questions on the exam, but also on top of that, you able to see what kind of test questions are going to be asked so that you can start studying again. And maybe you need to restudy your notes and realize, ooh, these are the questions that they're gonna probably ask. Maybe I need to rethink about how I'm studying right now. And when that would happen, the next thing that I found really important out of everything is trying to find patterns and connections to all the material that you're studying. Now in medical school, the body is complex. There are so many things that have connections and patterns and everything seems just mixed. And when you're trying to study all this material, just think like, well, what's the difference? And that's what the teacher's gonna trick you on is to make sure that you know the information. So it's important when you're studying your flashcards, when you're studying things like, uh, like I mentioned, mind maps and redrawing those out, try to see patterns and connections. So when you group them together, those you can see all those patterns like, Oh, these are all similar so let's study those together and when you're in the exam you think about those groups and you can see that there is differences within even that group because oh these are all similar but what makes them different out of you know those 10 or whatever it is knowing the differences even though they have a lot of similarities and when you group it like that you see the patterns and make connections your brain will start making connections too and it'll be able to understand and really understand the information which leads into the most important thing I think is when you can understand that then you should be able to teach it to others. And that's what made all the difference for me is especially my first and second year in medical school, I relied on teaching it to others. I would ask,
ask, hey, let's have a study session, not to just study together, but it's like, let's teach it to each other. And so we would spend, take turns teaching different types of the material to each other. And then they would point out, hey, that's not how I understand it, or that's not correct. And so that would help me rethink about it and ask them, okay, how do you understand it? And then it's like, oh, great, great. Now I can understand it at a more deeper level and I can teach it. So if you could teach it to somebody else, then you know the information and you're gonna be more confident going into that exam, just like I would be when I would do that. Now, you might be in a position where it's like, you know what, this is great and all, but I just don't have focus. I don't have attention. My brain chemistry is off. I don't know, I just can't figure this out. Well, I have a free guide in the description below for you. It is my fo ultimate focus guide that goes over the labs you should be looking at, the different types of nutrients to implement and supplements and different foods to implement and foods to avoid to help improve your focus and see where those situations and problems are. And that is in the description below that you can download. And I hope to see you guys in the next video. This is Dr. Grant signing out. Thanks. Bye.